Well, hello everybody, Mike here with Hardware Canucks, and yes, I am doing a GPU review. And that is because I've got a long history with this guy, with Intel's Arc, because I was there four years ago at that event when the so-called Odyssey was first launched. And ever since then, it has been a countless trail of breadcrumbs. From publications basically talking about trusted sources that had this launching in 2020, 2021, and early 2022. Well, here we are in October of 2022. And even now, after all that time, this whole launch for us feels like this, like a red hot last minute dash, a last minute rush from Intel to get everything squared away. Why? And that's because we received drivers at the very last second now that have fixed a lot of the issues that we are having with these cards. Not only that, we received two, can one, two, A770s, but no A750. But anyways, with all of that being said, there's a lot of expectation about these new GPUs. It's a third competitor in the GPU market. So let's jump right into performance with CSGO, a game that at any moment right now has about a million concurrent players in it. Oh my God. All right, look, I think we need to regroup here for a second because there's a lot to like about Intel's Arc. On the flip side, you also have to understand that there's a lot of growing pains that we need to talk about too. But first, let's dive into what Intel's launching first, and that's the Arc A770 and A750. The Arc A580 will be launching as their mid to low end card sometime later, and the A380 is already out and about as an entry level solution. Right at the top is the A770, which is aimed directly at the RT. TX 3060 and it comes with either 16 or 8 gigs of GDDR6 memory running on a 256 bit bus. But if you're wondering about the so called limited edition thing, well, think of this as Intel's founder's edition, nothing more. And Intel will tell you all day and all night with a smile on their face that is allowing them to quote unquote bring back the mid range GPU market. But look, that mid range GPU market was never abandoned. All of those prices just got inflated and nowadays they're coming down. So these ARC GPUs are actually going to find themselves in a really, really tough battle against some of the best mid-level GPUs on the market, not only from Nvidia, but from AMD as well. Not only that, you have to take into account that Intel is not doing you any favors here. If they could sell these GPUs for a higher price, they absolutely would. But their price right now dictates a lot about where they actually lie in the grand scheme of things. And from a pricing perspective, here's where things line up right now with the A770s sitting a bit lower than the least expensive RTX 3060s out there. And the same thing goes for the A750 against the RTX 3050. But where Intel might have a problem is against AMD's RX 6600 XT and RX 6600, two cards which make an awesome value case for themselves. And believe it or not, that's something Intel conveniently avoided to mention in all of their presentations. Now, the other thing you have to take into account is this is the starting at price. There's absolutely no telling what board partners and retail partners will actually sell these for until they're on the store shelves. And speaking of these, I do have to say that this is one of the best looking reference designs that I've seen in a while. That's because Intel kept their design relatively simple, but there's also, I guess you would say, a lot of beauty in its simplicity. It's pretty compact at just under 12 inches or 27 centimeters long, and the back plate's a nice touch too, but it's just there for cosmetics, not heat dissipation. I mean, it's a good looking piece of plastic, but nothing else. Honestly though, there's nothing remarkable about this thing until you turn on the lighting on the A770 limited edition. This has to be one of the best integrations of RGB I I've ever seen on a GPU, full stop. There's 90 individual LEDs between the fans, perimeter strip, and back. It just looks absolutely incredible. And every one of them can be controlled individually through Intel's RGB software. But there's some things that feel completely out of place here too. And this is, this is one of them, hold on. This is not a power cord. This is actually how you get the RGBs to communicate with your system. It is a proprietary USB connector, and that's not the only thing. This plugs in right next to your power cables and just dangles there, looking completely out of place. I have no idea why Intel's RGB control couldn't have just been pushed over the PCIe bus like everyone else does, since this just feels half-assed. 
Uh, hi, I'm the Lanko 3. Ever since I learned to talk, I can't stop. These panels help you get inside, but it's also kind of my mouth. I'm obsessed with panels, though. I have more in the back to hide cables. Good thing I work out to carry those three radiators. The fans have not yet learned to speak, but they're very pretty to look at, and I love when the air brushes against my metal skin. I prefer them closer. My brother is more quiet. I wonder what he's thinking. I was born to excel, though. <laughs> Find me below. Now you might have also seen that the A770 gets its power through an 8 plus 6 pin connector and that points towards higher power consumption than pretty much anything else in its category. As a matter of fact, the ARC A770's peak power consumption is actually higher than the RTX 3070 Founders Editions and it passes the RTX 3060 and 6600 XT by a country mile. That's really bad news for anyone who's being a little bit more power conscious these days. And moving on to temperatures, it looks like Intel's compact cooler is actually doing a really good job of handling that 225 watts of thermal load. Now before getting neck deep into the benchmarks, I did wanna bring one thing up and that's Intel mentions that if you want to be running Arc, you should be also running a system that supports resizable bar. Luckily, most modern systems do support resizable bar with a BIOS update. So if you're running a slightly older motherboard, just make sure that you're running the latest BIOS and check if that BIOS supports resizable bar. Anyways, onto some GPU accelerated apps and like you might expect, it didn't go quite according to plan, but we were prepared for some of these hiccups. Let's start with the good news because when Intel's one API works for rendering, it works very, very well in Blender. One other thing we needed to look at is the final output and the final output for ARC did show some rendering errors. It was really odd, it seems to be an issue with one API and the way it handles this texture pack that this scene uses, because none of the other test renders that we did showed this, but those use different scenes. In Handbrake, ARC has another really, really strong showing against AMD, but once again, it just can't beat NVIDIA's NVENC. ARC does, however, have a little trick up its sleeve, and that's full support for AV1 encoding. As more services start supporting AV1, this could become an ace up Intel's sleeve. Resolve performance, well, that's way, way behind the competition, but Intel's actually counting on their hyper encode technology to accelerate things a lot better than this. Unfortunately, that requires an Intel CPU with integrated graphics, and we're running on an AMD system here. On the flip side, project rendering in Premiere is clearly in Intel's favor against AMD GPUs. But Nvidia, once again, is still pretty dominant. 3DX Max viewport performance, what can I say? Well, it works, but Arc really isn't competitive here. And in SolidWorks, the wheels just fall completely off. Finally, the last two programs show just how dominant Nvidia is in this field, since neither Arc nor AMD's solutions even support GPU accelerated rendering in them. And no, AMD's Pro Render for Maya still hasn't been updated for for the 2023 version. So performance in a lot of professional apps, unfortunately, it's gonna be hit or miss. Intel simply needs more time to develop their drivers and add new features and work with developers to add those features to professional applications. But with that out of the way, I really wanted to talk about gaming, of course, because you already had a taste with those CSGO results. I wanted to actually expand that, go into the rest of the games as well. First of all, CSGO has a terrible performance, but it isn't the only one because Valorant, of all games, falls into that same boat too. It might feel like Arc doesn't like high frame rate, CPU limited games, but there's more to it than that. You see, Intel had to make a decision about where they put their driver resources for these cards. Where are the optimizations gonna be? And for them, they feel like putting it into DX12 and Vulkan games is better than focusing on legacy APIs. So that would be DX11, DX10, and DX9. And that causes a huge problem for millions and millions and millions of gamers out there because the games that are played the most at this point in time are usually the ones that are built on those older APIs like the CSGOs and Valorant's of this world. So right away, Intel is going to be fighting an uphill battle when it comes to performance on those. And then there's the rest of the games where one word really jumps out, consistency. Consistency is something every other GPU has, but Arc doesn't. Sometimes it's running right with the RTX 3060 and 6600 XT, while at other times its performance drops like a stone to the point where it should be competing against much, much lower end cards. Moving on to a few games with ray tracing enabled, and ARC is still 
hit and miss against the RTX 3060, but it actually has a distinct edge over the RX 6600 series, which is a pretty interesting development. But then again, we've always known AMD's RT performance wasn't great from day one. At a higher resolution, it becomes obvious ARC has that issue once again with games like CSGO and Valorant, since the frame rates are almost identical to those at 1080p. And yes, we tested this multiple times on multiple systems. This is just Intel's lack of optimizations for these ultra popular titles. But the rest of the games are a bit of a head scratcher because while ARC frame rates were all over the place at lower resolutions, at 1440p, it's suddenly a hell of a lot more competitive against the 3060 and 6600 cards. I mean, technically this could be due to its larger memory size, but barely any of these titles max out eight gigabytes as it is. Anyways, I guess this is just the silver lining for Intel. So Intel Arc, this is going to be a little bit of a tough one for me because after following this for four years, the expectations right now for me and a lot of other people were extremely, extremely low. And did it hit that low bar? I'm gonna say no, it actually did better than I was actually expecting when we got the cards here in hand. On the flip side, it is exactly what a lot of people were predicting, including myself, and that is it's extremely heavy on the architecture, but light on the driver optimizations. And what does that mean? It means for Intel, at least, this could be a fine wine that just needs a little bit more time to mature. How much time? We've got absolutely no idea. What Intel is asking you to do here is pay for the promise that Arc will improve with drivers, because right now at this very moment, performance and feature support is all over the damn place. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's terrible. So overall, I'd still pick the 6600 XT if I wanted to maximize bang for buck in gaming and performance per watt. Meanwhile, the RTX 3060 is just so versatile with a ton of features, broad support in creator focus apps, and it still gets good gaming performance. But anyways, with all of that being said, I am probably gonna be in the same position as a lot of you guys when it comes to Intel Arc because personally and somewhat professionally, I wanna give Intel the benefit of the doubt here because what the GPU market needs is obviously a third competitor, somebody to sort of like rein in AMD and Nvidia and sort of keep them in check. Does the Arc A770 do that right now? The answer is sort of, but not really. There are still a couple of glaring problems the biggest one is the support for those legacy APIs, some of today's most popular games. You just can't do that. So anyways, with that being said, I wanna know what you think about Intel's Arc. Is this something that you would actually think about buying? Do you want to pay for that promise of future performance? Let me know in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed this one. I am Mike with Hardware Canucks, and I will see you in the next one.